Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our presentation called Funding Your Study Abroad. Um, this presentation was originally given for National Study Abroad Day in February, uh, so that is why that is in the title. Um, but we're going to talk about a few different elements of finances going into studying abroad, a few ways that you can save money, um, and just answer any questions that you may have. And if you still have any questions after watching this video, you can always email us. So let's go into it. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, I am Anna Sophia Alcaraz. I work with the Study Abroad Office um, at Marymount University. So uh, the first question we often get is, well, first you have to be convinced to study abroad. So why go through the effort? Why should you study abroad at all? Why should you put effort into this? Well, there's a lot of benefits to studying abroad apart from you know, the typical travel, see the world, meet new people, which is already, those are already amazing reasons to study abroad. Um, you should also consider studying abroad because it helps you develop a global mindset. Um, you're going to be able to understand the world a little bit better um, and really see things through a different point of view, help learn about others. And those are all skills which are helpful, not only in a workforce, but in your everyday life. Um, this will also help you open up your ways, um, open up your perspective. It strengthens your adaptability just because you are really, um, you're working in a new environment, you're learning how to communicate with people with a different culture, with a different communication style, um, having team projects and school activities that will help you build those team building skills. Um, and apart from that, our students feel that they grow a lot on a personal level. Students come back feeling more confident feeling like they're more responsible and independent because they've been living abroad for a semester um, and really kind of taking care of themselves, but also navigating the world. Um, so it's a really wonderful opportunity. As for career, 78% of all employers are looking for college graduates who gained these intercultural skills, which are so key in the workforce outside of the United States. It just gives you a leg up in the workforce if you not only studied abroad, but have it on your resume. Um, and again, networking internationally. Some of our students have gone abroad and met people who gave them internships. Some of them have even uh, moved abroad. So again, helps you really navigate that. So um, the three things that often come that come out when we're talking about financial worries are um, financial aid flights working abroad. Of course, there are others, so we'll cover those later, but at least basics, um, covering a few basics. Uh, financial aid, yes, you can receive financial aid while you are abroad. Um, we'll go into the details of that, not only about the financial aid that you're already receiving, but financial aid that you could apply for. Um, flights, the the CGE does um, pay for global classroom flights, or that's included in the price, as you've seen, for most of our global classrooms. Um, however, for semester, summer semester, internship programs abroad, uh, we do not cover those flights just because we don't know if you want to arrive earlier, later. Um, you know, if you have a MILES program with a, with a company, we want you to have those options. However, some of our partners do offer flight vouchers. Um, so we can talk about those and as well as other ways to save money with flights. Finally, working abroad. Um, that is one thing. You cannot work abroad for money. Um, that would be a different visa. And so we really do want you focusing on your studies while you are abroad. And you'll want to focus on your studies as well because you might travel, you might explore. Um, so while you cannot work abroad that semester, there are other ways um, that you can save up and find a program that, you know, is still within your budget. So table of contents. These are the things that we're going to cover today. We are going to cover financial aid from Marymount and talk a bit about those opportunities as well as just again, um, financial aid from the institution itself. 
we're going to also talk about external opportunities. So scholarships from our providers who are our partners that you go with um, for these semester programs, um, as well as other um, scholarship opportunities. We're going to cover affordable programs. So we're going to just look at some of our uh, affordable programs. We have a lot of them, but um, we'll look at some of them so you get an idea of some places that might interest you. Um, and finally, we'll go into some tips on budgeting, which is where we'll talk about flights and um, housing and food and things like that. So, MU Financial Aid. So, first you may be wondering what aid is available. Um, we, you know, almost all your financial aid can be applied abroad. The only ex exceptions are the Claire Booth Loose. Um, scholarship and work study, but we really do recommend you talk to us just so we can, um, you know, work with you. Um, what happens is when you apply for a study abroad program and you've chosen a program, which we work with you to find one that meets your budgeting needs, um, we will give you a financial, um, like a budgeting form, and you will take that over to financial aid. So some um, students have been able to get a loan increase if they needed a loan. Some of them just are able to work with financial aid to see what is available. So that's already a good first step. So for our honor student, if you're an honor student, we do have a scholarship for a specific study abroad program. Um, we have our Oxford summer program um, that goes abroad for about six weeks. Uh, to Oxford, as the name implies, and you'll take six credits abroad. It's a really great opportunity and that scholarship covers it. So um, that program runs every two years. Uh, you can look into it. So that's another good opportunity for our honor student. Um, for all majors, because Marymount uh, has a Phi Kappa Phi um, you know, group on campus, uh, we do have scholarships available through them. Uh, so there are a thousand dollar scholarships. There are some requirements, so you need to have a 3.75 um, GPA minimum. But what you'll do is if that is something that you are interested in and you've got the GPA requirement, reach out to Dr. Todd Rimkus in the biology department. He runs our Belize program um, and he'll be able to connect you and work with us as well to see if you can apply for the scholarship. There's this really amazing new scholarship opportunity. So SGA is giving scholarships towards study abroad. So they can be up to a thousand dollars. Talk to our office about this opportunity. Um, we do give priority to long-term programs, so that's our semesters and summer semesters and global internships. Um, but definitely talk to us because we really want to take advantage of these scholarships and we're really thankful for SGA for you know, supporting the global perspective here on campus. Um, finally, we do have our Global Scholars Program. Our Global Scholars Program is for students who are interested in gaining the global perspective on a deeper level, so they form a really close cohort. Um, if you are a Global Scholar, uh, you get a certain set amount that you can use either for a global classroom or you can use that to go towards a semester program. So again, um, you might choose to pay the global classroom yourself and then use that money to go towards a semester the following year. Um, but definitely talk to our office and to financial aid on campus to see how your aid is going to apply because again, there's so many opportunities. So now you may be wondering what external opportunities exist outside of Marymount. Because say you already have a lot of financial aid for Marymount, but you still want a little bit more. So we've got two types of opportunities here. We've got the ones based on your provider, the partner abroad. Um, and those will be like, if you're doing a program through CIEE, you'll only be looking at CIEE ones. You won't be able to look at like another provider like teen scholarships, right? Um, but then we do have third party scholarships. So um, those can be combined with provider ones that you've received. So we'll go into a couple of those. So 
First are partner scholarships. Now there's a lot of information on these. I just pulled a few of them. Um, but these are some of our partners abroad, AIFS, CEA, Semester at C, CIEE, ISA, and TEEN. As I said, we do have others. We work with St. Louis University in Madrid, Lorenzo de Medici um, in Florence, but really like our partners, these listed here, um, do a really good job at offering some, some financial assistance. So AIFS, I know, gives scholarships of varying degrees. Um, as the information says, it is need or leadership based. Um, and they also do have specific grants for veterans and like to promote diversity. Um, so really wonderful opportunities. CEA has a lot of opportunities as well. So merit, need, and diversity based. And they also offer flight vouchers up to $1,000. So a couple of our students have actually gained these flight vouchers, used them to pay to get abroad. Um, and it worked out perfectly because they didn't have to, you know, count that in their budget. Um, semester at sea. So for those of you who don't know what this program is, you are living on a boat, studying on a boat as it travels around the world. And, you know, it'll stop in different countries. And when you stop there, that's almost like a break that you have. So you'll have a few days to explore the culture and to kind of get immersed during those days. Um, before then, you will be learning about the country. So let's say you're about to, you know, take part in Trinidad and Tobago, maybe the few days leading up to that, you'll have a course um, focusing on learning about the culture, the history. So when you land there and you go exploring with either your class or your friends, um, maybe visiting a few museums that tie into the course that, the courses that you chose to take on the boat, um, you'll be able to understand the culture more. So because you are mostly on a ship, they do offer some sort of work scholarships at semester at sea. So I know that a student who went abroad for a semester did get one, and I don't remember exactly where she worked, but you know, you might be working, not quite in the kitchen, but like helping clean some parts of the boat or things like that. So um, you work on the ship that you study at, and that helps, that money will go towards paying for the semester at sea. So in that sense, it is a, a scholarship, like a work study on a boat. So that's pretty cool. Um, CIEE. Uh, does travel grants, and then they have need-based, merit-based. Um, some of them even have program focuses. So let's say it's a program in a specific country, like they might be giving scholarships specifically for that. Um, ISA also gives needs-based and programs-based ones. Um, and TEEN actually offers full rides and merit ones, diversity, needs based. So again, no matter what provider you are going with, there are a lot of opportunities for you to get a scholarship to get some extra financial aid. So now let's get into some of the external um, scholarships that we have. There is the Fund for Education Abroad, so FEA. And FEA has a scholarship that you can apply to. Um, your program has to last at least 28 days. Um, you do have to be a US citizen to enroll for credit for this. Um, but some things that you're going to need are an unofficial transcript, a recommendation letter. We really recommend reaching out to someone who has seen you in the classroom um, to be able to show us you know, show FEA that you are committed to the academics portion um, and that someone who can speak to your work there. Um, they do have an application and then you'll also do a financial aid form to kind of explain the financial situation. Um, if you are looking for a scholarship for spring 2021, which I know that uh, we are all looking ahead, um, then the application will be open from July 1st to September 16th. So definitely if you are thinking about doing spring 2021, you'll want to reach out to our office before then um, and choose a program before then so you can start applying. It does require thinking ahead in this sense because our deadline in general isn't until October 1st. But for this scholarship, you do want to have a program in mind and to basically be accepted for the next semester. Um, if you are looking for fall 
summer or the academic year of 2021, 2022, so fall 2021, summer 2021, or the academic year, if you're doing a full academic year, um, then the deadline is a little bit later, but still early on, as you can see, November 16th through January 20th, 2021. Um, so again, if you are interested in applying for the scholarship, definitely start planning ahead, set up an appointment with our office. Um, we're doing Zoom and um, phone call interviews or um, you know, meetings. So even when working from home, we are able to meet with you virtually. Um, and once campus reopens, we are happy to meet with you in person. Foreign awards. So these are given through the State Department um, and these give preference to long-term programs. So 25 to 52 week ones, which are academic years. However, they do have scholarships for semester long programs, which are those 12 to 24 week ones. And then they do, um, they do have some preferences. So um, you, can see on the map that countries in green are preferred. Blue, you're, it's less likely to be, um, you're less likely to get a scholarship for a country that's in blue. Um, green would be where they prefer. Um, requirement for this is you do have to be a US citizen and they do prefer you focus on taking a language. Um, which doesn't mean your classes have to be in that language. So let's say you're going to Morocco um, and for Morocco, they, you know, you decide to take French or Arabic there, apart from taking, let's say, four classes in that they're offering in English. Um, so that would be okay because you're still trying to take a language, you're still immersing yourself. So they do give preference to that. Um, there are some preferred fields of study, but honestly, a lot of our majors fall under that. So sociology, politics, nursing is a big one. A lot of the STEM fields are big, so bio, and there's a lot of different majors that fall into this under the foreign awards. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely apply. Um, deadline is, uh, early on, very similar to FEA. So if you are interested in the time of 2020 to 2021, the academic year, so spring 2021, deadline to apply would have been January of this year. So definitely, if you're thinking about going abroad for the 2021-2022 um, academic year, come talk to us so we can start planning ahead for that. Finally, critical language scholarship. This one you might have heard of because um, Marymount actually has had students who not only are applying but who have received the critical language scholarship really recently. Um, this is also done through the State Department. This definitely has a focus on languages as the name implies. Um, and this program happens over the summer. So unlike the Boren Awards and FEA, which is done you know, you apply showing that you are doing a program through us or through a partner. Critical language scholarship is specifically done with them. Um, so what you do is you apply and then if you get this, you go over the summer to a country um, and really get immersed, focus on learning the language. It is through the US State Department. So again, um, US citizens. Um, what the price will cover is the visa, the language, the room, board, traveling with the program, costs for the pre-departure orientation, which is typically held in DC. Um, so it really covers a lot, as you can see. Um, the applications are open from September to November. So if you are interested in going summer 2021, you will need to be applying September through November. Um, this does not apply to all languages. So the CLS program has a focus on, on languages that are less practiced. Um, and because of this, some of them have different requirements. So if you are interested in learning, let's say Korean through the CLS, to apply to, to the Korean program, you might need to ask for um, they might be asking that you have taken a year of Korean before. Meanwhile, there are other languages where you don't need to know anything when you go in, where it's like, I believe Swahili is one of the ones where you don't need to know anything about Swahili. 
Um, so if you are interested in a very specific language, um, see what the requirements are. There are a lot of interesting ones, a lot of ones that are beginner level, um, and you'll just need to, when applying, write about why you think this would be helpful towards you know, what your career is. Um, and the goal of this is to really build bonds between the US and others. So it's a really wonderful experience. One of our students, Stephanie Downing, did it. Um, and she went to India, studied Hindi, and had a lovely time, um, stayed with the host family. So a really immersive experience through the State Department um, and very prestigious, so it looks good as well. So affordable programs. Um, we're going to cover some different programs um, that if you are worried about prices, we can look into just again, um, what options exist for you. So we've broken these down into two different types of affordable programs. Um, all of our semester programs, you will pay for Marymount tuition and then you'll pay for a separate fee, which is um, the housing fee. Um, so some of our programs, the housing fee actually comes out to zero. So all you're doing is paying Marymount tuition and that includes your housing. Um, and so programs like this is we, like these are, we have a program in Granada in Spain, where again, you'll have housing, you'll have food and everything, but you're just paying the equivalent of Marymount tuition, not living on campus, you know? Um, same thing with our program in Thailand, um, our programs in Peru, which we had a student who did recently. We've got a program in Brazil in the city of Florianópolis on the, on the coast, as well as if you are interested in going to South Korea, our program in Seoul with teen is very affordable. And our program in Costa Rica, San Jose, um, that actually sometimes has a medical focus and really good for biology students, I'd say. So if you're looking for something where you are a commuter student and you don't wanna to have to pay for additional housing, these are good options. Um, if you are someone who lives on campus and wants to save themselves some money and pay, you know, go for a semester without paying for housing, this is a great option. Now, as I said, the other option is uh, having programs where the housing fee is about the same as it would be for living on campus at Marymount. So if you are an on-campus resident for Marymount, then these programs would be basically the same thing. So um, one of our programs is MU in Rome. This is done through the American University in Rome uh, and is a wonderful program. If you're interested in going to South Africa, we do have the program in South Africa, which is about the same price as living on campus. Um, Barcelona, Spain, say Prague in the Czech Republic, Meknes in Morocco, um, Lorenzo de Medici in Florence, Italy. That is a really good program for um, students in the applied arts or digital arts. So a lot of our fashion students, graphic design, interior design, they've all gone. Um, to Lorenzo de Medici for semester programs. And then St. Louis University in Madrid, um, the University of St. Louis here in the US has a program specifically in Madrid, Spain. Um, and so you can take courses there uh, and you know they offer a wide variety. And again, it's about the same as it would be to live on campus here at Marymount. And I want to reiterate, all of our semester, summer semester internship programs will include housing in there. So you do not have to worry about like finding an apartment or finding a, you know, anything on your own outside of that. So these are really affordable programs for you. So budgeting. Um, this is where you start thinking about how you can better prepare for the program that you will be taking. Um, while you're abroad. So we'll go over a few tips and again, let you ask questions um, via email or by call after this program is, is done. So let's go into it. So the first thing that you should do is really figure out your needs. Um, how much would be um, logical for you to use? So again, um, maybe figuring out if you 
are wanting to do something that is the equivalent of Marymount tuition plus living on campus or if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper. So figuring out how much you want to how much you're willing to spend. And again, most most times it's, you know, make it as cheap as possible while still being able to find a country that I'm interested in. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is compare housing prices. So some of our programs give you the option to choose between different types of housing. So um, some of them might offer a homestay option or some of them, but also give you an option to live in an apartment or a dorm. Um, homestays, I'd say if, if your program offers homestay option, that typically is a little bit more affordable. Um, and those options look differently for everyone. So some programs, it might include breakfast and dinners, but lunches, you have to cover them on your own. Um, maybe you are someone who really just doesn't want to do a homestay option and you'd prefer to do an apartment and maybe the apartment costs more, but you are buying your own stuff at the local market. Um, and so you can kind of budget your market prices. You know, you can adjust your budget for what you'll be spending out buying food to cook. Um, and so definitely if, if your program has more than one housing option and you are open to the possibility of staying with a homestay, um, that would be, I'd say, a, a good option. Um, prepare for the unexpected. Make sure that you budget for you know, nights out or extra travel, you know, you might be taking the public transport, you might decide to take the train to a different city to explore. Um, so don't just budget out what you're going to need, but budget out for things that you, you would do here, you know, in the U.S. as well. Um, I'd also say start looking at daily life costs. So, look at, you know, public transportation, how much that is, and look at some programs. And again, um, once you are accepted into a program, you will be talking to an advisor there and they can give you some more tips about specifically the place you're going to. Um, but, you know, never hurts to start looking ahead, looking at public transportation, looking at, um, you know, cost of living, things like that. And finally, compare flights. If you decide, you know, if flight voucher is not an option or if you even if you do have a flight voucher there are ways to get cheaper prices for um, the same flight so i'd say tuesday mornings flights tend to be cheaper so if you're searching search there i'd recommend going on incognito mode so it doesn't get saved on your cookies and um, the websites the airline websites won't try to bump up the price because you've checked more than once um, flying out on Mondays or during weekdays sometimes saves more money. So see a few different options of, of where you can compare flights. Um, also, as a student, you can use the website Student Universe and they, if you create an account and prove that you're a student, they'll sometimes have deals on flights that are specifically just for students. So lots of ways to save some money budget. So <clears throat> to put it all together, just a few things to keep in mind um, while budgeting. First of all, consider your meal plans. So if you have an apartment, you will most likely have a kitchen. Even with a dorm, you might have a shared kitchen. So if that's the case, then you can budget for yourself and like save money by shopping at cheaper markets or buying cheaper um, ingredients, things like that. So start thinking in, in that aspect. Um, if you're living with the host family, you know, look into what is included and then think of what you'd be wanting to have for whatever is not included. Also, it's good to have a routine. So I'd say try not to eat out at restaurants a lot. Um, I mean, every once in a while is good. I'm sure you're, you're going to really enjoy wherever you are studying abroad. But think of it like studying at Marymount. You're not eating at a restaurant every day. You're not ordering Uber Eats every day or things like that. So budget as if you were living a little bit more at home and, and shopping in that sense. Um, and that'll also help you feel more at home instead of just being on vacation. So the other thing is uh, look at the standard of living and prepare for that. Um, so 
look up the trans public transportation. You know, you're most likely, no matter where you are, you're going to be either walking or taking a bus or taking a train or something. So looking up those prices will help you. Also look up average meal prices, look up how much certain ingredients cost in some areas, just to give you an idea of what you, you know, <clears throat> what you should be expecting. Um, and that'll help you adjust for that as well. Adjust your home life in little ways, you know, try to reduce what you're spending at home. If you're someone who goes out to, you know, goes out more, save in those moments. Um, just find little ways to adjust. Also, keep in mind that, you know, you can't work while abroad, as we mentioned, um, as we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation. So if you want to save up, um, if you don't have a summer job, take on a job over the summer. Um, if you have an on-campus job and aren't using all those hours, like, you know, if you're allowed to work 10 or 12 hours and you're only working eight, maybe see if you can take on the others to help save up in that aspect, to um, apply for campus jobs as well. Um, also just plan ahead, put together all the tips that we've given you. So apply for um, the scholarship opportunities through your providers and apply for the external ones and be saving up and look into those really affordable programs like we talked about. And again, those aren't the only affordable ones. Those are just some that we wanted to, to showcase. Um, so if you combine all of these tips together, it'll make studying abroad even more financially attainable than it already is. Um, so again, if you, you know, put those all together, that will definitely help. And if you can come up with a plan with your family, um, working together, you'll come up with some ideas that work for, you know, for your family, for your home life. Um, and also, again, don't be afraid to ask questions. We are here to help you. So finally, some resources that we've talked about. Talk to financial aid. Remember, once we give you your budget sheet, make sure to bring that over to them right away um, so you can talk to them, look into your options. Talk to, you're going to have a, a contact at the provider or your partner, wherever you're going to be studying abroad. Talk to them and see what financial resources they have because they will have you know, more information on those than, than um, so you could apply to them. And finally, of course, we are here as well to answer your questions, to guide you in the right direction, find alternative programs. Um, we're here to work with you and make this you know, an incredible experience. So again, no matter your financial situation, we can work with you. You can study abroad. We will find a way to make this possible. So thank you so much for tuning into this program. We really do appreciate it. Um, and just a small thanks uh, for um, SlidesGo who presented us with this tablet, this template for this presentation. So thank you again.